everyone! Welcome back to Online Classroom Jay Kutio. In this video, we are going to look at the importance of balanced diet. Well, first, what is a balanced diet? A lot of students misunderstand the word diet. They thought diet means losing weight. Diet means we don't eat oily food. No, diet actually means eating habit of a person. So a balanced diet, what is a balanced eating habit? So balanced diet means diet, the word diet means eating habit, the habit that contains all the food classes in the right quantities that are required by the body. Do you still remember the seven classes of food? Let's take a look. We have carbohydrate, protein, fat, vitamin, mineral, fiber, and water. So how do we know what is the right quantities? How much do we eat from each classes? Okay? We have to refer to a guideline and the guideline that we are going to look at is called the food pyramid. Here is the shape of a pyramid. Okay? And the food that is at the bottom level is the one that we eat the most. As we go up, we eat less and less of those food. Let's take a look. Rice, noodles, bread, grains, and potatoes those are the food that is in the class of carbohydrate and we can eat the most. About four to eight servings daily. Serving means one portion. Okay? For fruits, about two servings, whereas for vegetables, maybe three servings. And milk and dairy products, we take about one to three servings. Fish, chicken, meat, and nuts, these are all protein. Okay? Take about half to two servings of chicken or meat or eggs. But one serving of fish and half to one serving of nuts. And the one on the top, top level, you'll see some uh, fat, oil, sugar, and salt. And we all understand that we need to eat them sparingly, meaning we take only very little of them. Okay? So this is just a rough guidelines. We have other factors that we need to consider. What are some of the other factors that we need to consider? Number one, body size. Well, people with large body frame, people who are bigger, they need bigger portion of food because they, have, they, they, they need more energy compared to someone of a smaller frame. Secondly is the age. Well, for children and teenagers, normally they need more carbohydrates for energy and they also need more protein because they are still growing. Remember the function of protein? Protein help us grow. So because they are growing and they are more active, normally they need more carbohydrates for energy more carb um, and more protein compared to an adult. Next will be the type of work that we are doing. So for farmers, laborers, fishermen, they normally do really heavy work compared to someone who work in an office. So this group of people will need more food. Next is gender. Well, generally, generally men are more muscular and they do more heavy activities compared to women. So they need more food. And also the state of health. Someone who, are, someone who is sick, they are normally weak. And also depend on the sickness, depend on the disease, they need uh, food that is suitable for their condition. For example, someone with diabetes, for example, okay, they need a diet or they need an eating habit that has less sugar. So it depends on their health condition, they have a specific need for food. And finally, climate. Climate means uh, the weather. People from cold climate country lose heat quickly. So they need more food to maintain their body temperature compared to a hot climate. Well, next, we are going to look at calorific value of food. That is the energy value or calorific value. Okay, so why do we eat again? Okay, it gives us energy and also it provides nutrients for our bodies. Well, calorific value means, or the energy value means, the amount of energy that is released when one gram of that food is being burned. 
and we normally measure them with a unit, calorie or joule. And three main classes of food that provide us with energy will be carbohydrate, protein and fat. And each class provides us with different amount of energy. Let's take a look at this table. And we know that fat provides us with a lot of energy from the previous video, right? So fat will give us around 37 kJ per 1 gram or 9 kilocalories. For protein and carbohydrate, it will provide us with 17 kJ or 4 kilocalories. And how do we switch between calorie and joule? Well, remember 1, kilo, one calorie equals to 4.2 joule or 1 kilocalorie equals to 4.2 kilojoule. Okay? So how do we use this information? Normally when we get some food from the supermarket, we can find the nutrition facts on the food label. So let's take a look at this example. Say this is a can of tuna and the nutrition fat is shown on the screen. Okay? So how do we use this data here? So let's take a look. For every 100 gram, what does that mean? That means for every 100 gram of tuna that you eat, okay, what can we get? So let's calculate the energy that we can get from carbohydrate only. So we will have to look at the column that say per 100 gram. And then we find carbohydrate and we know that every 100 gram of tuna, you can find 1.1 gram of carbohydrate. And then refer back to our table, you know that every 1 gram, it gives you 17 kJ of energy. Now we will do the calculation. 1.1 times 17 and we get, we get 18.7 kJ of energy from every 100 gram of tuna in the calorie, I mean in, in carbohydrate, okay? So from carbohydrate, in 100 gram of tuna, we get 18.7 kJ of energy. Is that all? No, because we still have protein and fat. So let's look at protein. From the level, we know that every 100 gram of tuna, there's 23.8 gram of protein. So if you remember, fish, they are high in protein. Okay, and let's look at the data at the table. It shows that every gram of protein, it provides 17 kJ of energy. Use the same method and we can calculate from protein in the 100 gram of tuna, we get 404.6 kJ of energy. How about fat? Okay, again, same thing. We refer to the uh, level of the food. There's 1.2 gram and the energy will be 37. Use the same method we know we get 44.4 kJ. So here's all that we have calculated. From carbohydrate, we get 18.7, protein 404.6, and fat 44.4 kJ of energy for every 100 gram of tuna. So a total energy that we get from every 100 gram of tuna will be 467.7 kJ. How do we get this number? We add them up. Okay, 18.7 plus 404.6 plus 44.4. So, in this videos, we have learned what is balanced diet. You know how to refer to food pyramid. You know the six factors that actually affect a person, how much food they need. And also, we learn how to read food level for nutrition fact. Based on all those knowledge, I know you can plan a balanced diet. And why is that very important? That is very important for us to maintain good health, to avoid certain health issues, certain diseases like high blood pressure, diabetes, or even obesity. Okay? So that's all from Jekutio in this video. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and also to subscribe. Please check out other videos from Form 2 from this playlist. I shall see you soon. Bye!